folks, I want to catch you up to date on uh, the open graph images that I've been working on and sort of show you the solution that I've come up with. So um, I obviously got them working. I obviously got the screenshots working in the last video. Um, but the next step was I need to, to save them somewhere, right? Like in, I don't want to do it at build time. Um, I did want to do it in a serverless function, but I needed to cache them somehow. So my options were like offload them to like another service that holds images, uh, like a Cloudinary or ImageX or uh, S3, something like that, and then check if it's there and then, and then render it out if it's not there. Um, another option I thought was like, maybe I could do it in like a key value storage where just convert the whole thing to base 64, um, and then save that in a key value storage and then serve it up. Um, which I initially thought that wasn't a good idea. Cause I read that it, you, you shouldn't do that on, um, dynamo DB, which is, uh, AWS is like key value storage. Um, but then I read that Cloudflare Workers does allow you to do that because I guess it's big enough. So that's an okay thing to do. Um, but I just can't do it on Cloudflare Workers because they don't support Puppeteer. Uh, so I still have to stick to, to this. And plus, like, I think I'm going to host this thing on Netlify and Netlify uses a Lambda functions. So uh, that's why I went that way. Now, next thing, what I want to do is I was like, all right, well, like, so what should I do to cache the thing? And I was looking at Zeit's implementation of it, um, and they just don't seem to do any caching other than setting headers. And I thought like, oh, well, um, maybe like I can just cache it. So I found some details. Here we go on this website on different caching methods with uh, Amazon Lambda. Um, and it basically says right here is like any variables that are outside of the handler um, will be... Um, will be saved. And I don't know how for how long, like that will eventually be cleaned up um, by the Lambda, but that's fine because this thing generates in, I don't know, like one and a half, two seconds. I probably can um, get that a little bit faster if I work on actually waiting it for the images to load rather than just waiting for a second. Um, so I'm in good shape there. Um, so what I did is in my Lambda, I created a new map in order to hold the data and then what I'm doing is based on the URL that comes in, I'm using that as a unique key. So the URL has uh, the, the thumbnail, the title, um, the URL, all of that information about the post. And if that is all the same, then we should cache that data and just serve up the cache version of that image. So what I do is, let's go down here, is we make the buffer um, and then I convert that to base 64. And then I save that base 64 in our cached map. This is actually a really nice use case for a map over a object because um, the key of the map can be really anything that we want. In this case, a really long URL. Um, and then we save the base 64 image and return it and then render it on out right here. Now, the interesting part is, is that when this runs, we first check if that cached image is already in this map that we created outside of the handler. Um, and then if it is, then we simply just read it and then return it. Um, and that's great because it will run much faster. So I deployed all that stuff to Netlify. It took me a couple times. I don't totally understand how the Lambda stuff works um, with separate package JSONs, um, but then I got it up and running here. Um, and the first time that you visit one of these, it takes a second. Like, let me change the URL here to Wes JavaScript and then watch this. See, it takes a couple seconds to generate itself. Um, but now when I refresh the page, boom, 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 nice and fast. Um, this one font isn't loading. I'll, I'll take care of that in just a second, but now it's serving itself up cached and I'm, I'm okay with that. I, I like that implementation because like eventually they'll probably clean up whatever is in this map. Um, there's no promise, but then they'll just, they'll just regenerate when it's needed. So pretty happy with that solution. Um, don't have to use any sort of third party services. Don't need to store it anywhere. Just keep it in memory on the machine uh, until that thing is done. Um, other things I needed to do is I needed to pass in whether it was development or not. Um, and I'm doing that by just use checking for an environmental variable called Netlify, which will be true if you're on Netlify and, and it just won't be there false. Um, if you're local, 
and it seems to be working. Um, the other thing I did is um, use the process.env.url um, to hard code the Netlify URL, um, or sorry, not hard code the Netlify URL. Um, I probably also will have to say, or HTTP localhost 8888, just in case um, I'm local. So my next step now is to um, stick these in the head using something like React Helmet um, so that when someone shares a blog post, these things will show up. I'll cover that one in the next one.